It was an American story. It's not just exclusively the South, but really is the North played a role in the enslavement of African people. The country was built upon the institution of slavery and all of the fallout from the end of slavery and its aftermath are critical to understanding where we are in America today. The People Not Property website is an amazing resource that provides students with information about real people that they can uh, identify with or at least have a deeper understanding of the experiences that they had. The website put names to these individuals. You learned about their stories, you learned about their families, you learned about their emotions. And I think by humanizing these individuals, it really got the students involved and interested in the topic. All four of the chapters tell the complete story from beginning, middle, and then the end, which is kind of opens up to how does slavery in the North connect to today? The website also allows people to approach it from a variety of different time periods or through themes. If a particular topic within the website is interesting, let students go for it. Let them investigate. Let them, you know, be engaged. Because I found that they're more likely to continue with the activity if they're choosing something they're interested in rather than me saying, like, this is what you have to do. To engage the students, different mediums for them to look at was very helpful. This is such a great resource. It literally has everything that I need. Whether I was teaching it for one day or for one week, there was something there for everyone. Things that a teacher could just plug immediately into a lesson plan uh, to pick and choose and not have to use the entirety of the materials or spend a great deal of time sifting through to find the right thing. For example, a variety of curated materials. High quality videos. Very short readings with images. Individual stories of real people. And some excellent primary sources with explanatory notes. I prefer to use primary source documents when teaching about slavery. It really puts students in the place of the time. The language that's used kind of acts as a time travel for students. And if I can share their stories of these enslaved people with these students, that might spark a future activist. And that might spark someone to write a thesis paper and get more involved and you know, pursue a PhD. Or some kid might not do any of that, but goes home and tells their parents over dinner what they found out in class and how cool it was. That's the strength of, of the material that's there. You, you know that when students don't want to, to leave at the end of the period, that that's something that, that it's working really, really well.